LeBron, so the, the 20 blocks are the most in the NBA, I think, since going back to 2001. What about your bigs and the way that your roster is constructed and just how tonight went, uh, had the game go like it did without rim protection? I mean, it's a, I think it's a, just an unbelievable feat, a remarkable feat. Dwight, JaVale, and AD, they just um, they make it easy on, our, on us. You know, they make it easy on us, and we try to contain a lot of these small, quick guards, you know, a lot of these rim um, attackers. And uh, to know that you have that safety net, you know, behind you with, with JaVale, you know, uh, Dwight and AD, it's a, it's a heck of a luxury. There were some games in Cleveland where you were the rim protector, it seemed like, as like in small lineups. So what's it like just for you and the, and the rest of the guards in the perimeter to play when you know you have that throughout the game? Uh, well, we know we can, um, we can pressure up um, on, on a lot of guards. Um, you know, this is a, <clears throat> a three-point shooting league, so we just try to, for our responsibility is to try to run guys off the line. You know, you can get beat in this league a lot with the three-point shots, so we try to force guys into the mid-range, into the post, and, uh, and also to rim attacks, and we know we have that, um, we have that protection from our bigs that they clean up a lot of uh, mistakes for us. It happens a lot in the NBA. You get a lead, the other team comes back. You've seen it a million times. So how does that impact the way you play, if at all, uh, just with these, the way these last three games have gone? Me personally? Uh, you and the team. Oh, um, listen, you just try to execute every possession. Every possession is his own game, um, offensively and defensively. Um, you don't never get, I don't get too uh, high or too low. Uh, you get excited about plays. Um, you get down sometimes on certain plays when you know you made a mistake, but I always stay even killed with the game and, and uh, wait till the, the, the zeros and, and, and then assess the game from there. But then we played a heck of a game. This team came in and they play extremely hard. They were super well coached. And um, they did a heck of a job of uh, taking us out of a lot of things that we wanted to do offensively, and we just try to do the same with them. How encouraging is it to have a film session where you look at the Pelicans game and realize you gave up way too many point, paint points and then have this type of night where you know, there was such good rim protection uh, with all those block shots? Well, we take uh, that's one thing about our team. We, we take those film sessions very seriously, and we just try to build from that. And um, you know, we want to continue to have a growth mindset, and, and that was part of the film session. Transition defense and points in the paint from that Pelicans game, and we, we grew from that. You had one of the most famous blocks in NBA history. Is block shots a, kind of an underrated stat? No, nah, I don't think it's an underrated stat. I mean, anytime you have uh, someone that can protect the rim or you can get back and get a chase down block, um, you know, in a chase down, you look at, you know, what I was able to do in, in the finals. You look at Tayshawn Prince uh, block against Reggie Miller. Um, you know, so those are always momentum plays as well. But you have some of the greatest shot blockers in, in league history who's dominated the game. I mean, we have one. Um, and, and Dwight, who's done it throughout the course of his career. JaVale's done it throughout the course of his career. Obviously, AD. And, um, and there's been some great ones that come around in this, um, you know, throughout this franchise history, too. So, you know, when you have guys that's able to uh, change the, 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 the trajectory of the shot and also either, you know, block the shot or just make, you know, guards or forwards just change their shot or even bigs like tonight, um, it's, it's very key to your defense. We were talking a lot about AD's lob catching ability at the end of the last game. It was nice to get back in in the first quarter, remind people that, that you can catch some lobs too. Who? Uh, me? Yeah, first quarter. Which one? Inbounds pass. Oh, dang, I did catch a lob today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did, I did catch a lob today. KCP, he, he, he tested me. He tested me, so I had to go up there and get it. Um, but, you know, great pass and uh, great setup, you know, on the side out of bounds. Uh, Alex, the calf being back out there, how did it feel for you tonight? Felt good, felt good. Uh, a little sore, but nothing, nothing crazy. Uh, felt good to be back out there and just run up and down and jump. Derrick Rose, never an easy one to guard, but how are you able to be so effective on him? It's tough for my teammates. You know, they did a good job of communicating, give me in the, uh, in the coverages early, you know, take away uh, his dominant right hand. And even when we did that, he still made great plays at times. So uh, just tried my best to guard a really good player. What factored into the headband for you? Um, new stylist, uh, JaVale McGee. Um, He's been helping me out, and we just decided. I wore it yesterday at practice, kind of goofing around, stuck with it, and played good tonight. So I guess we'll stay with it for now. Oh, you're gonna keep it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, a one, not a one-time thing. Not a one-time thing. We're gonna stay with it. Um, that that 15-0 run uh, at, at the beginning of the fourth quarter. What what do you feel like was key there and came together there? We just got stops. You know, once we uh, we we did a poor job tonight as a unit of fouling. Uh, 
me found jump shooter, um, and then just put them to the line in general. They made a, almost all their free throws tonight, I think. Um, so whenever we just stopped found and we got rebounds, we were able to get on transition. Uh, Brian got a layup, I got a layup, Doe got a layup. So once we got out and ran, you know, it was a lot, of, a lot easier for us to just get easy buckets. Um, you guys, I think, are 20 and 0 against teams under 500. What, what do you see as sort of the common thread in, in these performances? Because this one wasn't obviously pretty, but it's another game where you guys are able to play. Yeah, you know, you've seen some teams recently, some good West teams, lo uh, lose to lesser opponents, and record-wise, at least, you know, obviously everybody's in the NBA and they can, they're capable, but. Games like this, you know, in the last couple where we haven't been dominant for 48 minutes, um, it's just about winning the game and then trying to improve. You know, that's the big thing. I think we did a better job with uh, controlling the paint, obviously, with all the blocks and giving up paint points. And then, uh, I mean, they only scored, what, this were 90, 99? Something around there. I mean, that's a good defense at night, no matter who you're playing. So just carry over from game to game, and eventually we're going to get everything clicking on the same, and it's going to be really, really scary for the teams. 20 blocks tonight and uh, you know three of your teammates with five or more what what does that do for the defense in terms of energy and, and I mean it starts to break for us you know if we if we can protect the paint like that and then we have good enough guards on the outside to contain other guards we're we're a hell of a night defensively you know when we're locked in and uh, Avery Bradley's kind of our, our head of the snake with his energy and then the big guys behind him are protecting for 48 minutes we're, we're a really good team um, I think it's just about being locked in for 48 minutes. And like we said, lately we've been hit or miss for 48. Um, but when we get effort like that, you know, it's hard to beat us. Hey, Frank, you guys had the 20 blocks tonight. It's one short of a franchise record. What, what about this game and the personnel on your squad and everything enabled that? And how big of a factor was that in the, in the game? Uh, obviously, it was a huge factor in the game. You know, our, our three big guys uh, just played exceptional basketball. You know, I think we, we as a group were not happy with uh, you know, giving up 68 points in the paint against the Pelicans. That was the, sort of the theme of our, our film session yesterday. And, um, you know, those guys took a lot of pride in protecting our rim tonight. And, uh, you know, obviously 20 blocks is uh, that's, that's pretty special. So those guys did a great job. Frank, uh the, the Pistons had 35 free throw attempts today, and you guys had 19. I was wondering what your reaction was to that, and if that was related to your tech at the end of the third. It, what can I say? What can I say? <laughs> it was related to my tech. It was the reason for my tech. And, um, you know, it's it's two ways. You know, I, I felt like, uh, well, let's just say I, I wanted my guys to stop fouling, you know, and I wanted to draw attention to um, what what I wanted to draw attention to. Leave it at that. Keep my money. Uh, Frank, you use words like like wanted to dominate your opponent, uh, wanted wanted to to kill your opponent, um, to rack up twenty blocks like that. Is that a reflection of that attitude uh, that you want these guys to to bring? Uh, it is. It's uh, you know we want to be dominant defensively, and um, and we have the ability to be dominant in particular in the paint. Um, you know, so to me there is. You know, like I said, that was the message yesterday. There's no reason to give up 68 points in the paint with the team that we have. You know, if we really commit, and um, you know, those guys did. They dominated the paint tonight. Only 32 points in the paint, less than half of what we gave up last game, the entire game. And um, you know, proud of their performance inside. Um, I think it's. I, I don't mind it. I just think he stayed in it a second or two too long. We were running on a break. He could have had a putback, um, but I don't mind that. Frank, even before tonight, you guys were leading the league in blocks. Um, you have three guys, obviously, who you know, can be you know, really incredible rim protectors. What has just that trio done for you this year, and how has that kind of shaped what you are defensively? Well, you can't, you can't ask your perimeter guys to push up on a three-point line uh, as much as we do you know, without that type of support behind you. You know, and, and really our, you know, our scheme is, uh, it centers around the, the ability to, you know, chase guys off the three-point line, even our pick-and-roll defense. And, um, you know, hopefully, you know, force, force the opponent to take tough twos over our length at the rim or to play in the mid-range. And, um, you know, we can still do a better job on a three-point line. But when we did chase them inside, you know, we were great cleaning things up.